So good for a pop song. Good afternoon, everyone. Does it seem dark in here? Yes. Yeah, it seems dark to me. Hopefully, just you guys, not me. Uh, What's that? It's just our just mood. you. Just it's just it's just your mood. Okay. Uh, well, with that, <laughs> with that auspicious <laughs> opening, let me. Is it good for? Is it okay for the cameras? We need the sup. We, I I think we need the supplemental to pass ASAP. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, but it is dark in here. I can see you. I can see you, Matt, and, well, no, and no, more no. to the point, I can hear you, so. <laughs> no, I'm more concerned about the cameras being able to see you. Well, they? there's no blind on them. I think we'll be. Is there? Okay. All right. All right. You have nothing? I have whatever. I'm ready to take your questions. Okay. All right, let's start with uh, Gaza uh, and Middle East. Um, uh, last week, uh, Several U.S. officials, including the Secretary and the Vice President, others, um, uh, talked about the importance of uh, Israel not repeating what it did in the north in the, in the south. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering now that the operations in the south have, uh, have begun, um, if you think that they are um, uh, doing uh, or you know, following your advice. Uh, let me let me say a few things about it. One, I think it's too early to make a definitive assessment. Uh, the secretary was very clear about how we want to judge this based on results, not based on intent. I will say that in the first few days of this um, a renewed military campaign against the South, we have seen some things that don't look like uh, the operation as it was conducted in the North. For example, uh, in the North, be at the commencement of, of operations, you saw them uh, ask or order more than a million people to move. Um, we've seen a much more targeted request for evacuations here where they, the Israeli defense forces have identified specific neighborhoods where they plan to conduct military operations and urged in advance of those operations the people in those neighborhoods to move rather than telling an entire city or an entire region to, to vacate uh, their homes. So that is an improvement uh, on what's happened before. They have instructed them to move to areas that we know are deconfliction zones. It's one of the things we discussed with them last week. So uh, UN supported facilities where people can be out of, of harm's way. So that is an improvement. but. What the secretary made clear uh, in our meetings with the prime minister and other officials uh, of the Israeli government on Thursday is that we do not want to see a military campaign uh, in, the nor in the south that looks like the north. And what we mean by that, we do not want to see the same level of civilian casualties. We do not want to see the same level of mass displacement. They briefed us on plans that were very detailed that they said were intended to, intended to avoid mass displacement and civilian casualties. but. The, uh, as the Secretary made clear, it's not just intent that matters, it's results, and we are watching very closely and we'll continue to watch very closely before we draw any definitive assessments. Uh, okay, but, but uh, you know, there, there are, are already reports that the operation in the South has taken a, a large um, civilian toll. Uh, do, do you not? Uh, so you, I, you don't have a. You still think it's too early to say? I think it's too early to draw a definitive assessment. I will say that, I, unfortunately, we do expect to see civilian casualties as a result of this campaign. Um, that is sadly true in all wars. It is especially tr going to be true in a war in a crowded urban environment where the opponent, Hamas, is using civilians as human shields and hiding themselves, hiding their fighters, hiding their infrastructure behind civilians. So what we have made clear to Israel is that we expect them to comply with international humanitarian law and do them do everything they can to minimize civilian harm so we don't see a repeat in the south of what we saw in the north. Uh, and, and with respect to that, we're at the very early stage of the operation, and I think it's too, too soon to draw the definitive conclusion. Yeah. Uh, the Israeli government is conducting this investigation to look at uh, Hamas using rape as a weapon of war against Israeli women and girls on the 7th. Uh, 
they they say they've now collected more than 1,500 eyewitness accounts of sexual assault, sexual violence, including rape against women and girls that day. Is that something that the Biden administration condemns? And also, have the Israelis shared any of that evidence with U.S. officials? Uh, I'm not going to speak to um, what they have and have not shared with us. We have been briefed extensively uh, on a number of their findings. We don't, of course, have our own independent assessments to make right now. We don't have people on the ground conducting such assessments. Uh, but we have seen Hamas commit atrocities, uh, uh, both on October 7th and since October 7th. Um, and we obviously condemn those atrocities and support Israel's uh, actions to hold Hamas accountable for them. Um, on Friday, uh, the UN Secretary General said, um, I'm paraphrasing, but seemed to say that every, you know, all this evidence should be investigated. As far as I'm aware, the UN has not confirmed that they will take up a separate independent investigation. Is that something? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware whether they are, but certainly we support an investigation. The Israeli government is uh, is conducting one, and they have our full backing in doing that. Uh, last question for you is: There's these reports now about during this is about the Hanukkah um, celebration period we're about to go into. Um, Jewish organizations canceling uh, celebrations, menorah lightings, um, something like that happened in London over the weekend. It also happened in Williamsburg, Virginia. I'm wondering if the State Department has a message for American Jews ahead of the holidays um, about how to approach public uh, celebration. Yeah. I, I would say one of the very unfortunate, tragic things we have seen since October 7th is a rise in anti-Semitism, both here in the United States and around the world. And we condemn anti-Semitism uh, in the strongest possible terms. Um, uh, we uh, oppose anti-Semitism wherever we see it. Uh, and of course, we tell American citizens always to make decisions based uh, on their best safety and security assessments. And uh, this is not a this is not a specific. Uh, piece of, uh, this is not a specific recommendation here to specific to any one city. As, as you know, the State Department does provide travel advice for events around the world. And when we have updates to provide based on circumstances on the ground, we provide that. So, but I would just say in general, um, it is tragic that we have seen after the law, after more Jews were killed on one day than any time since the Holocaust, that one of the responses has been actually an increase in anti-Semitism. Anti that is an extremely tragic, and I think it's incumbent upon everyone in positions of authority to speak out against it. Um, just to come back to the, um, the Israeli offensive, um, I wondered if you could sort of talk to us a little bit about what's behind, what's behind this messaging uh, end of last week and over the weekend. Um, you know, is there, is there an assessment you know, for example, the the vice president um, calling the, the death toll devastating, um, and Defense Secretary Austin talking about driving the population into the arms of the enemy. This suggests that the administration has come to some kind of conclusion that the uh, the the way that the Israelis have been conducting these operations has not protected civilians. Is that is that a, like is there a finding or is, has there been some kind of assessment that has come out with that? I, I think you can take those comments at face value, just as you can take the secretary's comments, not just last week, but the ones he made in previous weeks at, at face value. You heard him say several weeks ago uh, that far too many Palestinians have been killed as a result of this conflict. You heard him say before that that Israel needs to take additional steps to protect civilians. And we've had very direct conversations about steps that they can take to protect civilians, including as recently as last Thursday when we were in, Is we were in Israel. So uh, I, I don't think it is, a, it is a secret that we think that too many Palestinians were killed in the opening weeks of this conflict. We want to see Israel take additional steps to minimize civilian harm. We talked to that, to that about them uh, uh, when we were in Israel last week. They briefed us on their plans. And if you go through their plans um, uh, about how they uh, intend to minimize civilian harm, you have to step back and re remember that the Israeli military is one of the pr most professional militaries in the world. They have, um, uh, they have uh, legal determinations that they make when conducting strikes. Uh, they go through uh, procedures where they weigh civilian harm when they conduct any of these strikes. They have put in place these plans I mentioned a, mo a moment ago to evacuate specific neighborhoods to keep civilians out of harm's way, rather than just telling an entire population to move. So they are going about this with uh, a certain uh, degree of deliberateness to try to minimize civilian harm. But again, 
it's not just the intent that matters, it's the results. So we want to be, we've been very transparent with them about what our beliefs have been. The, the comments that the secretary made publicly were the same comments that he made in the meeting with them, that we want to see them take additional steps and we're going to be watching to see how they do. And, you know, it's been noted that, uh, yeah, you've, you've had these warnings to civilians, but at some, some points people have been told um, to go to certain areas or these areas will be safe and then those areas have then been bombarded. You know? Is well, that something that you've witnessed and are able to... So that is, it is, it is exactly, so I, let me talk about it this way. So I think that was one of the criticisms of the first, of the first few weeks of this campaign that people were told to move to the south without giving a specific place to go and then there were attacks on Khan Yunus after people had moved to, to Khan Yunus. One of the differences that the Israeli government has proposed going forward is there are UN designated facilities in Khan Yunus, in Rafa City, in central Gaza, and in the south where the Israeli defense forces have directed people to go. And those places are on lists of deconfliction zones that should not uh, be the target of military campaigns. Uh, so that is an improvement that we have seen, at least in intent, at least in their plans, and we're going to see how uh, it's actually executed. And kind of the nature of the, of the offensive itself. Um, you know, I thought, I guess I understood that in the initial uh, northern phase, there was this massive aerial bombardment and then, and then the, the ground operation. Um, I guess we're going through that again. You know, did, is, there, is there a message, you know, there should be a more surgical ground operation without the, the preceding uh, aerial bombardment? Because that's where a lot of these civilian casualties seem to be being. I, I don't want to speak to the specific military operations uh, and military decisions the government of Israel will have to make and our conversations with them uh, about, the, uh, about those tactics that they might pursue. I think it'd be inappropriate to, to do that. What we have said is they need to take additional steps to protect civilians. I just went through some of the what what some of those steps are and some of those steps that uh, we believe they are taking. But as opposed, as there go the lights. But when it comes to specific um, uh, tactical steps that they might take, I think I'll keep those conversations private.